Hey, welcome back Fish on Northwest. We are here in the bait lab for this week's installment of a How To, brought to you by Max Lure. Everything that uh, we talk about often when, the, when it relates to, you know, kokanee and walleye and trout and such, uh, definitely check out maxlure.com for all your needs. Okay, with that, we are talking summer steelhead and coon shrimp. One of my favorite ways to go after them, basically presenting them with a bait diver and or you can actually bobber dog them as well. Um, again, the recipe and how to cure them and the cure that I rely on that I've been doing, tried to for years, we will put that link in the uh, show notes afterwards, uh, link it to this how to, so you'll have the full picture on how to get them ready and then how to fish them. So tonight, we're gonna talk about how to rig these things. Again, we're running them on a plug rod, okay? Seven, seven and a half foot. These are my summer plug rods. It's a six to 15 rating, one piece rod, seven foot. Fantastic little plug rod to put out in front of the drift boat. Now you can use them on a sled as well as you back them down the river. Uh, either or works. Uh, seven foot rod, we spool it up with a line counter reel because it's real important when I deploy these out, whether I'm fishing plugs or bait divers, that they're all equal out in front of the boat. You're putting up that wall of resistance. You're either going to force those fish to get mad and come strike your offering and or with all plugs and or divers and bait being equal distance from the boat, you're gonna have that wall that's either going to make them nervous and push them back to the point where they have to either turn and run down through the tail out, which they're not gonna do uh, most times during the day. They're gonna come after that lure and strike it. The nice thing about these coon shrimp, I don't know what it is, the, the look of the shrimp, the way we fish them straight on and those beady little eyes are staring that fish down it flat out pisses them off and they get aggressive. The takedowns are fantastic. So line counter reel is important. If you can't, uh, you, uh, ha don't have one of those or can't afford one, simply take your braided line and put a mark in at 30, 35, 40 feet, depending how far out you want to fish them. Now, when I get into lower water and the water is pretty darn clear, I'm not afraid to run these 45, 50 feet out in front of the boat. 45 on average is typically where I land and it seems to work pretty well. Uh, I will put a you know 10 to 12 foot top shot on there. I'm running um, 45 pound braid on this. Not that I need that strength, but the diameter and the way it performs is what I like off of my plug rods. It doesn't have, you know, people always complain like you never run braid on your plug rods because of the buoyancy. The, the narrow diameter of your braid cutting through the water is a moot point. The buoyancy doesn't matter. The diver and the plugs take it down just fine. So I run braid with a top shot for a little extra stretch and give. That's gonna be about 10 or 10, uh, 12 feet. That's gonna be 20 or 25 pound uh, monofilament. Don't use fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is a larger diameter, it's stiff. It also sinks, um, which is fine when you're running plugs because you are you know, presenting a lure that sinks, but it's just too, uh, can be too brittle, too, too wiry. And uh, if it gets nick, it can be a little bit uh, susceptible to breakage. So I like to use a little, uh, just a standard monofilament with a little bit of stretch in there. To that, I'm gonna actually uh, tie into a dual lock on the end of the top shot, okay? We're just gonna put a dual lock on there and that's it because everything else clips on. It's modular, it's easy to put on there and it's easy to remove. So I'm gonna put on my diver. Now I like to use these Brad divers and I'm gonna show you the difference here. This is a Magnum and this is a standard. Your Magnum is gonna go nine, we'll, we'll say ballpark 10, nine to 20, 22 feet in depth depending on current. Your standard Brad's diver is going to go uh, 8 to 14 feet, I believe is what it'll say on the specs. And for me, it is more oftentimes than not, I stick with natural colors. I like to run the, the flat blacks. These are not uh, a shiny or a gloss black that's reflecting sunlight. It actually absorbs the sunlight into it, makes it look like a natural shadow in the water. I find that the, the flat blacks in the clear with the black bill over years has outperformed all the other ones. You can run the reds and the blues and the greens and the flashy um, colors if you like. That at times can be an attractant to draw them in to see what's going on, but because steelhead are visually stimulated, I just find that the natural colors in black with summer steelhead and clear water uh, gets the job done time and time again. I don't necessarily like to run like your jet divers. These are a jet 10, which is gonna take it down to 10 feet. You can run the 20s if you want. But for me, I like the rapid rod action that uh, happens when you're running those brads. They wiggle back and forth much like a plug. You get a lot of rod tip uh, indication of how that plug is running. When I'm running a jet driver and it's so smooth in its cadence and doesn't move around a whole lot, 
it's harder to tell at times if in fact it's hung up because you can actually hang it up and the line in the water still puts a little pressure against the tip of your rod and that rod tip will stay loaded up and as you crew, you know, creep down river, you're basically passing where it's hung up and you may not even realize that. So, especially if you're just beginning or want to give this a try, I would recommend using something like a brad so it's going to give you a lot of tip vibration. You can watch exactly what the tip of that rod is doing and you know that the plug is working all the time or that diver is working all the time so your presentation is moving down river and not hung up. When it does get hung up, the rod tip goes idle, the line goes flat, the rod goes flat. It's a pretty easy indicator that it's hung up. So you simply just reel, lift up, get the bill out of the rocks, redeploy it, send it back down and you're fine. So to that, uh, I will run about a five foot leader to a dual hook setup. And again, it's all modular. I actually take a dual lock and put it underneath the diver so that everything just clips on. I clip on there a B chain swivel. And the purpose for that, if I run a barrel swivel on here, when I connect that to the diver, and there is a chance at times that that bill would come in contact with that, with your leader. Okay, and these things get pretty banged up on the rocks, they get a sharp edge on them. So if I run that to a barrel swivel and snap it, that is definitely at some point gonna come in contact and rub. That is creating a break point that you don't wanna deal with. So what you do is you put that on a B chain and in no way, shape or form will that bill ever come in contact with your leader. It puts it out there far enough that even if that thing you know, finds itself in contact, it's gonna roll on that B chain and not, uh, not cut your leader. So little uh, reference point that you wanna make sure you utilize. A five foot leader to a dual hook. And I have now, as of late, switched to using these BOMAC uh, style hooks. And uh, for good reason, I like the way that uh, this particular hook sits flat on the back, which puts it basically flat against the shrimp as it sits and it, uh, it uh, allows that hook to stick up out of that shrimp. So it has a nice flat back to that style of hook. And again, it's gonna allow that, that point of that hook to sit up and out of the meat. And then I put that stinger hook on, okay? And that, I've switched that to this Fusion. It's a size, and it's a number two uh, octopus hook. It's got that pink coating on it. I went to this size two. I used to run a size four, okay? Size four is a little bit thin wire and it's kind of a small hook. And you can get by with summer steelhead for sure. But I've gone to this size two. It's a little thicker hook. But I know for certain if for some reason I get that fish just on that number two, that hook is not gonna bend out. That fusion hook by Berkeley in this number two pink is a very strong hook and I've landed fish on this uh, solely just on that, not even getting the, <clears throat> the number one into the fish. So again, I like the sickle hook because of the flat back and how it allows the, uh, the tip of the hook to sit up and out the meat. Again, if you have followed me for a few years, you know that I run a straw on top of the hook and I also couple that with an easy egg or some type of small, soft plastic bead, the size six, eight, eight millimeter on average. And for me, that just comes down to using an easy egg or some type of soft, uh, even scented type egg on there holds the straw in. So how do we, how do we create this uh, leader and make that all work? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna set that over here. First and foremost, I tie these hooks anymore, kind of like I do my kokanee rigs, okay? I got the, uh, got the sickle hook sitting there, and this is actually 30 pound, um, that is 30 pound fluorocarbon. And the reason I use 30 pound fluorocarbon, I'm not worried about the strength, but because it's like a wire. The wireness of this hook allows that when that is sitting in that shrimp, that number two sticks right out in front of the head on that shrimp. And because it sits right out front, when those fish come up and grab that shrimp, if I was using, um, you know, say 12 or 15 pound monofilament, that number two hook is basically gonna be down, all right? But you can see the springiness, I'll do that down here, you can see how springy that, that uh, fluorocarbon is. Again, it's like wire, it's super strong, and I just like the way it forces that hook right out in front of them, sticks it right down their throat. Fish we hooked the other day, that number two is literally down in their throat because it just goes straight in as they uh, uh, grab a hold of that shrimp. And 
So I pre-tie that. And then it's really simple. You take your 15 pound leader, and because you've cut your egg loop back on the back side of your finish on your knot, your eye on your sickle hook, your number one, is wide open. I can literally lay that leader on there and do a multi-wrap, just like tying another mooching rig or just an egg loop type uh, knot on the top of this. I'm gonna put about four to six wraps on top of that, and I'm gonna come back through and I'm gonna finish that wrap out like I would on any egg loop. I'm gonna give it three or four wraps underneath that. And again, I'm going right over the top of that previous wrap, okay? Now we're just gonna draw that on through, keep it off of my other plugs, okay? Gonna grab my pliers, and straighten that out, cut that little tab off as we always do. Basically, this is no different than how I tie a double hookup rig on my kokanee lures, okay? Believe it or not, Tommy, kokanee. Uh, so now I have a 30 pound braid separation on those two hooks, sticking out there on a wire and very, very strong. And I've tied that to a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader and it works fantastic. Now, all I do is I take these plastic straws and I slide them down over the hooks I got this one all jumbled up now, but uh, I'll slide that straw down over the hook and then I push the easy egg on so that it basically holds that straw down on the shrimp once I get it all rigged up, okay? So that is how it finishes. Then I tie that barrel swivel on the top of that leader and we're good to go. So really to pin these on here then, and it's real simple, we're gonna take the coon shrimp, okay? We're gonna look at the head, the carapace is all intact. We got nice firm body meat. We're gonna stick that number one into the meat and we're gonna roll that hook out through the carapace, allowing that number two hook to come right there to the top of that shrimp. Now, as I said, the back of this sickle hook is nice and flat. See how much that hook sticks up out of the top? That is a game changer, the way that that elevates, okay? Now, instead of multi-wrapping this tail, which every time I wrap this, it makes a cut point on that tail meat, I can simply put a single half hitch around the tail and I suck that right up to the eye of the hook. I'm gonna straighten this tail out and capture all them legs. I'm gonna slide the straw down. This is just a clear plastic straw, believe it or not. I used to get these at uh, Costco <laughs> in, the, uh, in the food line uh, or anywhere you can get beverages like that. You just grab your plastic straws. Now we push that onto the tail. Look how it straightens that shrimp out, okay? Hook is nice and straight, shrimp is nice and straight. And to secure that straw in place, I slide that easy egg or that rubber bead down and there you go. That thing sits straight in the water and it fishes out in front of that diver just like that. It presents to them fish going down river, swimming back and forth, just irritating the snot out of those steel head. They see that whole shrimp coming at them. If you cure them up properly, <clears throat> excuse me, use my brine process or whatever cure process you uh, prefer, as long as you have confidence and durability in your shrimp as you're presenting them, you can take them through a whole drift, the heads don't fly apart, the, the carapace doesn't come off, you're fishing a whole shrimp and that is key. You can't bobber, uh, you can't uh, bait dive just the tail down there. The, pr the productivity and the amount of success is gonna greatly diminish. You need to be fishing whole shrimp, you need to be fishing whole shrimp on a dual hook and you need to force them down the throat of these fish on bait divers. You can use this same exact setup, uh, shorten the leader by about a foot, and on your bobber dogging setup, you can use the straw, you can use the easy egg, don't worry about putting the bead chain up here, simply hook it to your swivel, run about a four foot leader on the straw and the easy egg, and the durability of your shrimp bobber dogging style works just as well. Hopefully that, uh, we kind of got through that rather quick. A lot of components here, but it's pretty easy to follow. You're just simply tying leaders that are gonna make those shrimp fish nice and flat and out in front of the fish with a durable hook setup that's not gonna fail you at any point. All right, with that, we're gonna jump out for a quick break.